Right, so that is me back in Scotland today. As you can see, the weather is very Scottish. So yeah, season opener this week. So starting off on Monday, had a, a kind of eventful past sort of six weeks of training. Plantar fasciitis, adductor tightness, hamstring tightness. Just each week, there seemed to be some sort of little problem that's sort of occurred. I still have managed to get a lot of sprint volume or a relative amount of sprint volume in. So I'm not too concerned that I've sort of like lost shape. I feel like I've maybe sort of just maintained and not really improved too much. So I think really just competing this season is going to be sort of a key in getting better at the 100. So that's kind of the idea, I guess, going into the season now. I would have liked to have a more sort of smooth transition into my opener with like consistent training. But, you know, that is what it is. There's not really much I can do about it now anyway. I don't think there's really much I could have done about it even at the time. It's just, you know, something that happened. So yeah, just out for like a walk today. So I've had like, I think a total of 12 hours sleep over the last three days. So that jet lag coming back from LA has not been, not been kind to me. And I feel like I really get hit quite hard by jet lag as well. I always feel like it takes me a while to really get back into the swing of things. So that's, you know, hindsight, it probably wasn't a good idea to do the training camp so close to my opener, but it's the only time I could really get time to do it. So I guess, you know, looking back at it, I would probably change it up a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, gonna try and get some sort of training in today. I did sort of have an idea of like testing some jumps maybe, but I don't know if I feel sort of up for that. I'll maybe see what my coach says. I'll jump on a call with him later, see what his thoughts are, but I was gonna do like a full warm up at least, just to kind of get moving a little bit, get the, the blood flowing and yeah, just kind of get back into the swing of things really, being back in the UK since I've had a few days of just sort of like complete off days with traveling obviously but yeah definitely feeling quite fatigued i had obviously like a little hamstring sort of tightness on friday of last week it's like going into the meet i've got like eight days nine days to sort of get back into the swing of things so i've had this happen before actually this happened when i ran my windy 11 flat back in 2022 i think i ran like 11.02 into a minus 0.4 headwind so I've had it happen before, about eight or nine days out, and I've got like a rough plan of like this worked last time. I was able to run some max effort 30s, you know, like three days out. So that's the plan for Wednesday is to do like maybe like three or four times 30 meters. And then I'll maybe do some like gym work as well. If I'm, if I'm feeling up to it, I'll see what John has in store. We did have like an adjusted plan for my hip issues that I, were ha that I was having, like my adduction. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'll need that, it's not feeling, it doesn't feel bad when I sort of like lift it up, it's only in like very specific ranges that it feels sore, so it's something that I can kind of work around, but yeah, it's not really been an ideal sort of prep after indoors, but just gotta make do with what we've got, so yeah, that's really about it for this little like introduction, I guess, hopefully you'll see my training for Monday today, my little warm up that I'll do and possibly jumps, as I say, ask my coach, make sure he's alright with it, and I'll do it, but yeah, I'll see what Okay, so I've sort of recapped the last sort of few weeks of training, everything that went on, so obviously, as I mentioned, I had quite a patchy sort of last two months or so of training, like obviously I finished outdoors really strong with a nice little 7 flat 60 for a 100th PB and I was feeling really strong going into my final comp, then had some hamstring tightness and had to kind of cool off a little bit for the next two or so weeks, had to take it nice and easy because of that and then getting into prep felt really good, just had some like issues crop up and that seems to just be like a theme for the next six or so weeks was just like these little things that cropped up, like there wasn't any serious injuries, it was just like little minor things that were sort of making it so that I wasn't really getting good quality training in, like I still got good quality reps in, just not optimal training. I didn't get a lot of the longer sprints that I thought were really going to be a big needle mover for me. I didn't get to do that, so now the plan is to kind of just do that this like in season now, just do some of these longer sprints between competitions, you know, compete into shape, run good quality reps in training, max velocities, speed endurance is kind of the focus at the moment because that's the areas that I, you know, really need to work on, like my acceleration, honestly doesn't need a lot of work. You know, the block work that I've done 
indoors block work that I've done, even from like last year. You know, it's all kind of like there, like I don't really feel like I need to do blocks, it's mainly just the max velocity and the speed endurance side of things that really need to, you know, be improved, they need to kind of like match my acceleration, which I don't really feel like they currently do. I'd say honestly, my, like my speed endurance is probably better than my max velocity, and I'd say max velocity is probably still the key area that I can, you know, improve, but I think just doing longer reps even is going to help improve my max velocity, just getting some good quality upright running is really going to help. As I say, you know, move that needle and get me to these kind of faster times into these kind of 10.7s, 10.6s. So that's kind of the idea with the next few months of training. Well, I'll sort of re recap this week, essentially. I kind of had that hamstring tightness on the Friday, so I was a little bit apprehensive, but I wanted to kind of do some sort of training on the Monday, just because I hadn't really done anything over the weekend, obviously flying back from America. You know, I had jet lag, so I had to kind of recover, rest, and I didn't really get a chance to do anything on those kind of days. And I didn't really want to because of the hamstring tightness as well, like it wasn't a good idea to go and like, you know, throw myself back into training. When you have an issue like that, I mean it's good to obviously move, but I'd say there's an extent of, you know, you need to be cautious with things, especially with my injury history in mind. So yeah, Monday did some jumps, the jumps were all right, I wasn't really able to push off well and like jump well into the, into the plant I guess, like the ground was like too slippy realistically like you can see that I'm like plant are flexing when I'm like landing so obviously not not super optimal when it comes to jumping but better than nothing I guess I probably would have been better just doing some like standing vertical stuff but you know hindsight's 2020 as they say so yeah that was Monday's work then I think Tuesday I did like a little general day just kind of like you know, moving the body pretty much Wednesday was some 30 meter blocks and then some lifts as well so 30 meter block session was actually really good, like from the get go I felt really kind of snappy and explosive and managed to drop my fastest time of the year at 4.02 which kind of matches what I'd done the year previous and you know running that time, running half a tenth quicker than what I was sort of this time last year going into my opener for the, you know, two, I think it was the 200 at British Unis so yeah, feeling, you know, generally really good, like the numbers and training looked really good same with like lifts, like power cleans, hang power cleans moved really well with 100 kilos for a double, which I'd never done before. And then, you know, 105 was moving like butter, like it was really kind of just flying up quite quick. Did want to go sub one second for 105 on the sort of VBT, but wasn't quite able to do that. I think it was like 1.12 seconds to complete the rep. But honestly, like not too bad. Like I can't, can't complain. Nice deep squat, moving fast, moving, you know, my PR from three years ago really well. Like, I've not tested my front squat PR, that's why it's my PR. I think I could do, like, I reckon I could have done, like, 125 on that day. Maybe, like, 130 at a push, but, yeah, hopefully I'll kind of test my front squat one rep max. Maybe in the off-season we'll do it, and I'll try and aim for, like, I feel like three plates would be nice. Like, a nice, like, 140 front squat would look really good. But I'll see what I'm capable of, obviously, when I get round to that. But that's not really the purpose of this video. I kind of digress a little bit. So, yeah. That was kind of the training on that day. I was feeling really good, obviously, after doing that workout, after kind of like seeing that time. Like, even like the with the reaction time on the free lap, it was like a 4.12 for the 30, which is like the fastest I've ever done. I've never ran 4.12. Had a 4.13, a 4.14, 4.18. I've had like a lot of, I've had like a good crop of like 4.18 something, like 4.18, 4.19, 4.17. I don't know if I've had 4.16 before actually, or 4.15. But I've had like a good crop of those kind of like high teens, so like getting towards the low teens is a good, good trend. So yeah, feeling in really good shape. I then had a day off the day after that, then the next day was the shakeout session. So for the shakeout session, what I ended up doing was some, just kind of like did my sort of general warm up and then I did some jumps as well. So for the jumps, I did some like RSI. The repeat jumps honestly felt kind of trash. I think it's just because I've not really done it much because of my knee, I'm just kind of being... I guess like extra cautious with my knee, like I'm doing jumps still, but just not like the repeat jumps because that's like the most intense thing on my knee. So I've not really been doing those as much as of recent. So I feel like the main thing is that I'm just not in sort of like good shape to put up good numbers in RSI. At the moment for like repeat jumps, for like single drop jumps, I think I did like 426. So yeah, still RSI is looking pretty good. Not the best it's been, but you know, decent at least. And then no arm swing counter movement jumps were like really good. I think it was like, I did 7.16 for the first jump and then 7.14 for the last one with sort of a shallower knee bend. So yeah, 
that's like the highest I've done this year with no arm swing. So again, kind of just confirming that I'm in very good shape at the moment, at least as it pertains to like, you know, freshness and readiness, like I'm ready to compete. And as well, this is like off the back of like a two and a half, three hour sleep. So obviously not getting great sleep. It's not really going to help my case when it comes to you know doing athletic things but it's kind of just the situation that i was in like there's not much i could really do about it it was just one of those nights where you know when you're trying to like sleep and you know you need sleep but you can't because you're kind of like overly focused on the fact that you need sleep so that's kind of like my issue but yeah that was sort of this week that was like the little review of this week of training so i will let you get back to the video and listen to my review about the season opener so i'm gonna recap the season opener so yeah, one and 200 season opener. So I'm gonna just sort of start at the beginning. So I got back from LA one week ago and then it was kind of the week of my season opener, which I think in hindsight, it wasn't really ideal, but it was the only time I could get off to you know, go over to LA and you know, just be, live there for like three weeks essentially. It was really good fun. So I had a really good trip over there. It was just a bit too close to the season opener, I think. So yeah, that was my sort of first issue. I was feeling the jet lag during the week, like Monday, Tuesday was still feeling it quite bad. And then Wednesday I had a session, so I rested until Wednesday. Essentially from like Friday until Wednesday, I kind of just rested because I was not feeling, was not feeling great, like physically, mentally, spiritually, just everything was not feeling good. But Wednesday I woke up and I was feeling, you know, ready to sprint. I had my hamstring tightness on the Friday, which was like, you know, I guess like five-ish days prior. So there was still part of me that was like almost scared to run, but I was like, I'm probably gonna be recovered enough. Like I didn't pull my hamstring. It was just sort of a tight feeling. So I should be good. So yeah, ran the session, ran amazingly well, actually fastest 30 meters that I've done in training outdoors, all conditions ever. So yeah, positives to take away from the session, then lifts as well, PR'd on hang power clean for a double with like 100 kilos and front squat was moving insanely fast as well. Everything just was good. And I was like ready to you know, go and compete now. Then the day before I did like a little shakeout session and I actually jumped really well. I think I jumped pretty much my highest this year, like hands on hip counter movement jump and my RSI was looking like all right. It wasn't like the best it's been this year, but it was, you know, solid numbers. I was jumping high off the, the RSI, it was just the ground contact time was a little low. But things were looking good considering that I'd not really done RSI much. I've not really done too much in the way of jumping recently. So yeah, things were definitely looking good for the meet the day before. One thing I'll note is my recovery so the two days before I competed were not great. It was like three hours sleep, then working you know, on my feet for nine hours from seven till four. Then I did my shakeout. Then the day, the night before, I got like again about three to four hours sleep. So it's like back to back days of just like insanely bad sleep, insanely bad recovery. And sleep that's like that bad, it actually affects like your hormones, like your testosterone crashes after that. There's like, I think there's a study that shows it I can't remember the specifics, I don't want to kind of you know, list off a number that's inaccurate but I certainly know that it does crash your testosterone levels and that is not good for competing, you definitely want to have like a sort of like regulated, regular sort of hormonal um, homeostasis. So yeah, those things, taking into account just those two things there, it probably wasn't going to be a good run realistically. And I sort of knew it wasn't going to be amazing. I did not, I'd like, I didn't have a goal going in because I knew I'd came back from LA legitimately like one week ago. I hadn't even been in the country for seven days yet by this point. So it's like, I just knew that I wasn't really going to run amazingly well. But yeah, warming up on the day felt quite good. I felt quite sharp from the blocks. I really felt like I was pushing back well. Then my issue came, so the call room, they called us probably about 25 minutes before, 20 minutes before maybe. So I had a plan to do my final warm up at 11.40 and that's what I did. So I did a 20 meter fly and I usually like to go max effort for my last warm up so that if the call room's long, then I'll get that long recovery that I need anyway for a max effort warm up. And I like to make it like a max effort 20 meter fly. I think that just kind of really gets me firing and ready to run. So 
I did that, but because I was running the two and the four by four relay the next day, I didn't want to do too much in the way of max effort runs. So I was like, right, I'll just do like 90%, maybe even sub 90%. So the run felt like it was in that kind of range, that 90, 85 to 90 kind of range. So I did that and then I went to the call room and we were like sitting for so long and I think I'd like cooled down too much by the time we kind of got out to the track. Blocks then felt weird setting them up. It was like strange blocks. I'd ran, the thing is I've ran with these kind of blocks before. I think for the British Uni indoors, it was the exact same blocks, but it just felt strange in the set position. Like it didn't feel like it was a comfortable set position. And I know people will say like, oh, you don't want to be comfortable in the set position, but I'm kind of of the opposite mindset that you actually want to be comfortable so that you're not sort of like panicking in the set. But I didn't really, really feel comfortable or sharp kind of like coming out of the blocks. And I think that combined with the, you know, the warm up being so far out from the actual run, like I think it was 23 minutes out, looking back at the videos, just not, yeah, it's not ideal, not what you want. And then that was kind of that. I then, you know, the gun then goes off. First 30 was quite good. It was then just, I think the max velocity phase that kind of like let me down. And then obviously I'm not hitting as high peak velocities as other people are hitting. So they're then decelerating less and I'm decelerating a lot more crashing down. And yeah, 1118 plus 1 1.8. So it's a really good wind. The only thing is it was like 13 degrees and like wet and not kind of ideal conditions. I do think I could have pushed like a, a low 11 if the warmups had been better, if I'd kind of been more comfortable in blocks, possibly even sub 11, but that's maybe a bit of a reach, honestly. But that's all of my thoughts on the 100. Then did the 200 the next day. I was feeling incredibly flat. Like I woke up, I wasn't really looking forward to it. My hip was sore. My body felt really good. It was just the hip that was the issue. And I was kind of convinced that I was going to pull a hip flex or something running this. But we did it done for the four by four. And I was like, I need to run this. I can't just like drop out because I don't want to like let my team down, right? So. That's what I did, warmed up, felt super, super flat. Every single rep just felt like dog shit, just not good at all. And yeah, was in the call room, just wasn't really ready. I wasn't like mentally ready to run today. I was like, I got a much better sleep. I think I got a good seven, eight, maybe even, you know, nine hours at a push. Got a good sleep, slept kind of mostly the whole way through the night. But again, you know, you're gonna have that residual sort of sleep deprivation from the nights before and yeah it just wasn't wasn't great came out of the blocks actually for the first 30 it felt really good even for the first sort of like 50 it actually felt like i was really kind of like in the race it was then during the float phase like i've not practiced floats in training since like I think like the start of the year, like January, right? So it's like, I'm not kind of like practiced in that. I wasn't really ready. I didn't have like a mental sort of like, you know, I didn't do my sort of usual mental prep that I would do. And yeah, during the float, I just kind of like fully decelerated a bit too much. Then coming off the curve, I just had nothing else to give. I kind of like tried to re-accelerate at about the 80. And I just kind of felt like people were then just kind of like pulling away and pulling away and pulling away. And I wasn't really focusing on my own race and just everything seemed to just go wrong. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And then cross, cross the line. Like I think I was like two seconds. I think the winner was like two seconds faster, more than two seconds faster than me actually. And he wasn't even, he was like jogging that shit. He wasn't going that hard. So yeah, that was the 200. It was 2389 minus 0.8. So I actually want to run another 200 like later on in the season, just for fun, just to sort of see what I can muster up. But yeah, that was like terrible. Maybe like mid season, I'll run another one. And then at the end of the season, I'll run one. I'll kind of just see how training goes over the next few weeks, months and so on. But yeah. Not a great weekend. I think just the jet lag is really what kind of messed me up a bit, but that's really it. I think this is like way too long, so I don't know if anyone's even watched this far, but thank you for watching the video and stay tuned for my next episode. Hopefully I will be running a little bit quicker. But yeah, that has been it for this because it's like nine minutes at this point.